First guess, he, he grew up on a pig farm and has become a local MP, and I have no idea what the correlation is there. But let's welcome John Nader. Thank you, Don. <laughs> <laughs> John, welcome on the show. Uh, hey, great to be here. It's, it's, what has been your journey from a pig farm to being our MP? Well, speaking of pig farms, actually, I think it was Harry Truman that said that anyone who goes, goes into uh, politics should know something about pig farming. So uh, that was uh, Truman who said that. But uh, yeah, no, born and raised uh, in Perth County, just uh, north of Mitchell. Uh, did my early education, Upper Thames in Mitchell, went on to Mitchell District High School. And of course, like uh, most 19-year-olds, I, I moved away from home, promised that I was never moving back to Mitchell. I was gone for good. And Six years later, of course, moved back to Mitchell. So I did my education at Carleton in Ottawa. I uh, went on to the Masters at Queen's, spent some time working in Correctional Services, Correctional Service of Canada, spent some time at the Treasury Board in Ottawa. Uh, moved back, uh, got elected to Town Council in Mitchell, uh, did, uh, started a PhD at Western, uh, spent three years as a lecturer at King's College uh, teaching political science. Uh, won the Conservative nomination in 2014, got elected in 2015. So that's the uh, Coles Notes version of uh, how I got to where I am today. Okay. Now, you're one of the new breed of parliamentarians. You're, you're quite young, one of the younger ones. And uh, what were the first impressions when you arrived? Yeah, so I was 31 when I was first elected, and uh, I thought that was young. Uh, there are a few MPs who are younger yet than me. I feel old compared to some of my colleagues who, uh, who are still in their 20s. But yeah, age 31, uh, first elected. Uh, it, it's a humbling experience. That was probably the first... Uh, first impression I had walking into the House of Commons chamber for the first time, uh, knowing that it was in that chamber, you know, that some of the great politicians have passed to, you know, uh, stake their claim and then had some of the great debates. So it's a, it's a humbling experience and a great honour as well to, uh, to have been elected and to serve in that place. You know who had the office before you, just out of curiosity? Well, the office before mine was an NDP uh, MP uh, right. who uh, was no longer was not re-elected, so I, I got his office. Uh, but then I was only in that office for a short period of time, and then I, I got bumped to, uh, to the Wellington building. So okay. uh, being the MP for Perth Wellington, it's uh, nice to be in the Wellington building. So it's a, it's a new office. It was closed down for renovations for uh, eight years, so it's, uh, it's where I am now. So. so You've been pegged as somebody who has a great understanding of parliamentary procedure and history. Why is this important to you? And can you give us an example of how this has been important to Canada? Yeah, so I mean, I, I, I'm one of those people, I love, I love to read. I'll, I'll read pretty much anything, and one of the things I, I've read uh, is Parliamentary Procedure and Practice. It's, it's a 1,200-plus uh, page document which basically governs how the House of Commons works. It, it's something I enjoy. It's a little odd. Most people would find it odd, but uh, it's something I enjoy. But it's, it's good to have that background and foundation uh, in Parliamentary Procedure. Uh, it's come in handy a few times. A couple times we've been able to extend debate on different things, so we get an extra couple hours to debate in, uh, just knowing some of the tricks of the trade and, and being able to do that. Uh, it's kind of fun to be uh, in the chamber sometimes and have colleagues come over and say, you know, hey, John, I'd like to do this. Can we do this or can we do that? And uh, having some answers for them to kind of uh, go about some of those uh, those uh, routines. So. You're the parliamentary procedure nerd. Something like that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So Take us through a typical day when you're in Ottawa. So uh, every day seems to be a little bit different, but I like to be in my office around 7.15, 7.30 in the morning. Wow, that's early. Well, I, I like to have that first hour of the day just kind of catch up on things. So catch up on emails, uh, catch up on some reading, kind of before anyone has a chance to, uh, to get in the office and, uh, and throw new things on my, my desk. So I like to do that you know, first thing in the, or in, in the morning. Uh, my staff usually come in around 8.30, 8.45. We have a quick meeting uh, first thing in the morning, kind of plan out what's, what's going on that day. And by 9 o'clock, it's usually uh, first meeting of the day. Uh, might be a stakeholder group, might be a constituent coming uh, to Ottawa from, uh, from, from here in Perth, Wellington. House Commons usually starts sitting at 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I like to be in my seat by 10 o'clock to, uh, to be there for the opening of Parliament. Uh, and then throughout the day, we have committee meetings. So my committee is the Procedure and House Affairs Committee. Uh, we meet at 11 o'clock in the morning, from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock. So that's what I, I do from that period of time. Uh, 2 o'clock is question period. Uh, that's the time of day where there's most viewership on CPAC, uh, tuning in to watch uh, the, the hustlings on our question period. Uh, and then after that, we back to other meetings uh, for the rest of the day. Um, uh, typically, we wrap up the day around 6.30, 7 o'clock. We have votes. Uh, in the House of Commons, we still do uh, roll call votes. So that's the traditional... Uh, standing and being recognized uh, as your votes cast. So with 338 MPs, uh, voting takes about seven to eight minutes per vote, uh, which is okay when there's one or two votes, but there have been times recently where we've had uh, several hours of votes. Uh, one time we had 21 hours worth of votes where we're voting consecutively for 21 hours. So it can be time consuming, but uh, it's, uh, it's one of those traditional uh, parts of the, of the House of Commons that's uh, survived to this day. 
We live in a world where the methods of doing politics in the last 10 years have changed greatly, basically because of social media. Mm -hmm. uh, what you have any uh, insights or views on this? Yeah, so it's one of those things. There's the, the positives and the negatives that come with everything. And you know, some, some of the great positives with social media is they have a new way of connecting. New way of connecting with people directly, uh, straight straight to them through Twitter, through Facebook, through Instagram, through Snapchat, and so it's a really a really great way to connect with people. But at the same time, you've got the negatives come with it. You know, the, the instant uh, communication that sometimes you say something before you engage your brain, and uh, a lot of times once you said something, you can't take it back. Even something as simple as a typo uh, can cause you great heartache and great headaches uh, down the road. So you, you've got to be careful what you're saying. You know, a lot of times when you're dealing with social media, with the written word, you know, the tone doesn't always come through. So, you know, if you meant to say something sarcastically, it doesn't always come through on Twitter or Facebook, and you can get yourself in some trouble doing that. And we find some of our friends south of the border have, uh, have certainly taken to using Twitter and, and have found themselves in a lot of trouble uh, by saying certain things on, on Twitter without uh, first kind of giving it some thought. So uh, mm -hmm. it's got some positives, great for communicating, and we find, you know, I think the statistics are 51% of Canadians now get their news and information through digital sources. So we have to use it, we have to use it as a tool, we have to be careful. Mm -hmm. Now let's get established a bit here. You're representing in our riding St. Mary's. Yes. And uh, what kind of things do you uh, do for the, this <laughs> town of St. Mary's? Yeah, so great uh, great question. One of the things uh, I, I like to learn from people who've gone before me, so one of the uh, my political heroes is a guy by the name of Ted Arnott. Uh, he's the MPP for Wellington Halton Hills, uh, just elected Speaker of the Ontario Legislature. One of the uh, suggestions he always made to me is, is to watch what you promise. And one of his lines he, he uses is that uh, the only promise I make is to give my very best efforts. And so that's what I like to do in, you know, in politics is to give my best effort in advocating for my community. So whether it's uh, through infrastructure funding, one of the things I think is so important to have long-term stable infrastructure funding. So for a place like St. Mary's here, you know, the Wellington Street Bridge, for example, that was partially funded through the gas tax fund. And that's a fund that's flexible and allows the town council to decide, what's your priority? This is what we want to focus on. And it's not the federal government or provincial government saying, here's funding for X, Y, Z. It's a, pro it's a municipality saying, our priorities are this, and this, this is where our funding needs to go. So that's one of the things I like to focus on, saying, let's give more flexibility in our funding so that they can... You know, choose what's important. So that's one of the things. The second thing I, I like to do all the time is advocate for the people and businesses in our community. So when I'm out in St. Mary's, when I'm in all communities, I hear different things about small businesses, about the ability to compete, you know, making sure the red tape's not there that's hindering them from going forward. Make sure we have a tax regime that's fair so that we're not unduly targeting those small businesses. Those with maybe one, two, three employees really people who want to expand and maybe hire one employee, two employees, it's really focusing on the needs of those uh, those businesses. Uh, you've got been at many events. I see you everywhere. I go. You seem to be there. How do you balance the responsibilities of family? Because I know you're a real big family man. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, family's number one. And my, uh, my three kids are here somewhere. They were in the splash pad earlier. Uh, they try to get me to th run through it beforehand. I, I avoided that. But uh, you no, know, I do bring, try to bring my kids and, and my wife Justine to as many events as possible. Um, it, it sometimes works out great, you know. In the last couple of weeks, uh, fall fair season has started, so you know, my kids have probably been to more fall fairs than uh, most people will in their lifetime. So we try to do uh, community events where, where they can participate in and, and try to uh, build that together as, as a family. So it's, uh, you're becoming a bit of a movie producer in Ottawa <laughs> too, are you? Well, something like that. So uh, the House of Commons, uh, the, the actual building, the center block on Parliament Hill, is going to be shut down for the next ten years or so. Uh, so I like to meet with school groups as they come through and. Uh, one, uh, one parent kind of made the comment, you know, she was taking extra pictures so that her other family members could see the parliament buildings before they shut down. So what we decided to do is film some videos. So we've done seven behind the scenes videos of different aspects of Parliament Hill. Share them on our Facebook page so people can get a sense of what these buildings are like uh, before they're shut down for 10 years. So the House of Commons, the Senate, and my favorite the library. Okay, there you go. Fun facts, here we go. Favorite hockey team? Toronto Maple Leafs. Okay. Favorite musician or band? Uh, Try to be happy. Okay, favorite movie? Oh, favorite movie. Oh, that's a tough one. Jurassic Park. Okay. But the, the, the first Jurassic Park, not the, uh, the sequels that were terrible. Okay. Coffee, tea, or milk? Uh, being that Perth Wellington has more dairy farmers than any other riding in the country, milk. Okay. Live TV show from St. Mary's? The Front Porch Show. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Federal party leader? Andrew Shearer. <laughs> okay. How surprising. Okay. We have <laughs> I, I, I'm really surprised if I said Elizabeth May or something. Yeah, yeah. We have Who a is great, by the way. We have a local sword down that has portraits of politicians on soft. 
is your goal one day to have your face on a, on a pair of socks? I can think of nothing greater to be a politician than have my face stepped on on a daily basis. So that, <laughs> that would be amazing. Okay, John Nader, thank you for coming into the Front Board Show. My pleasure, thank Very you. Good.